We are going to be investigating the vertex form of a quadratic function. Uh, in the following activity, which is in your study guide if you're in my class, oh, we are going to be looking at the three different items that have to do with the vertex form. Uh, the vertex form of a quadratic function, as you can see here in the top box, is y is equal to a, so coefficient a times x minus h squared plus k. Uh, in the activity, as you can see, I've highlighted blue, green, and pink. We are going to see what happens to the basic quadratic function when we alter those values. So what happens when I alter the coefficient a, or alter the constant that's in the brackets with x, or alter the constants on the end of the vertex form? Uh, so we're going to break that into a number of parts. If you're in my class, you may want to try this activity on your own without the YouTube lesson. You will need a graphing calculator. So in this first part of the activity, we are going to see what happens when I alter the value k. So what you'll notice here is that I have different values for k or the constant on the end of the basic quadratic function. So if I graph y is equal to x squared, this is the graph y is equal to x squared, you can see here that the vertex is at 0, 0. So I'm going to fill this activity out as we go. Uh, next, if I graph the function y is equal to x squared plus 1, we might notice a different pattern. So let me go ahead and graph that function. So y is equal to x squared plus 1. If I change the value k to plus 1, what you'll notice here, and I can actually go ahead and calculate it, I won't do this all the time just for the, t for the sake of time on this lesson, but I could go ahead and calculate the minimum, which is the vertex, so left bound, right bound, and guess, and what you'll find out is the vertex is exactly 0 and 1. This here just represents 0. It's uh, just the calculator um, <clears throat> being a little bit imprecise, but it's 0, 1. So your vertex is at 0, 1. If we graph the next one, which is y is equal to x squared minus 3, so I'll graph that function, you'll notice here, and I could calculate it, that this vertex, I promise you, is at 0 and negative 3. Okay. So what we're noticing is there's a direct relationship between the value of k at the end of the vertex form function and the y-coordinate of the vertex. So without graphing, in the next part of the lesson here, it says predict the coordinates of the vertex for the following functions. So we're noticing that these values here correlate exactly to the y-coordinate of the vertex. So if you're predicting, you would say the vertex here would be at 0, 4, here would be at 0, 12, here would be at 0, negative 7, and here would be at 0 and negative 38. Okay, so the value k has that impact on the vertex of a quadratic function. Next part of the lesson, what we're going to do is focus on the value of h. Okay, so the part that's in the brackets, the constant in the brackets with x in the squared term of the brackets. So what you're noticing here, again, which I'll highlight in the appropriate color, the appropriate color is green in this case, uh, is that we are looking at altering this value that's inside the brackets <clears throat> with x. Okay, uh, We already know that this first function, y is equal to x squared, has a vertex of 0, 0. I graph that one for you. So the basic quadratic function, y equals x squared, has a vertex of 0, 0. If I graph y is equal to x minus 2 squared, and that's right here, there you go. Let me go ahead and actually calculate it. So I'm going to calculate the minimum, so the vertex. Choose a left bound, a right bound, and a guess. And it will calculate that the vertex here is at 2 and 0. Okay, so this exponent here just is really close to 0, and 1.999 is the same as 2. So this vertex is at 2 and 0. Uh, the next graph. which is y is equal to x plus 3 squared. That vertex, I promise you, I could calculate it as well, is negative 3, 0. So what we're noticing is that that value that's inside the brackets is oppositely related to the x-coordinate of the vertex. So if it's x minus 2 squared, the vertex is at 2, 0. If it's x plus 3 squared, the vertex is at negative 3, 0. So it's oppositely related to the x-coordinate of the vertex. So when we're looking at What's inside the brackets, it's oppositely related to the x-coordinate of the vertex. So if I was predicting here, without graphing, I would say my vertex of x plus 2 squared would be negative 2, 0. If it was x minus 8 squared, it would be positive 8, 0. If it was x plus 11 squared, it would be negative 11, 0. And if it was x minus 1 squared, it would be 1, 0. 
All right, so the last thing we're going to look at is what happens when we alter the coefficient a of a quadratic function. So you'll notice that what we're doing here, <clears throat> and again, which I will do in blue, is altering the coefficient. So here's 0.25, negative 0.25, 3, and negative 3, and let's see what the impact of that is. So if I go ahead and graph, we already know that the vertex, or in this particular one, what we're actually looking at is not where the vertex is, but whether it opens up or down. And we know that y is equal to x squared opens up. So let's go ahead and graph y is equal to 0.25x squared. If I graph that, you'll notice that it also opens up. The vertex will also be at 0, 0, so it opens up. If I graph negative 0.25x squared, what you will notice is that this function opens down. Okay, let's look at two more. Uh, so if I graph y is equal to 3x squared, you will notice that it opens up. And if I graph <clears throat> y is equal to negative 3x squared, you'll notice in this case that it opens down. So the summary here, if you're predicting or noticing any patterns, you might want to make some on your own, is that if the coefficient is positive, it opens up. And if the coefficient is a negative value, it opens down. So that's the conclusion. So if I look at these coefficients here, if I have a negative value, it opens up, or sorry, a negative value, it opens down, and a positive value opens up. So this, because it's negative, it would open down, up, two-fifths is positive, that's up, and negative six is down. So finally, what we're gonna do in these three parts, what we have done is seen what the different values for A, H, and K have an impact uh, as far as the vertex form go. We notice that A has to do with whether it opens up or down. H is oppositely related to the X coordinate of the vertex and K is the Y coordinate of the vertex. So let's go ahead and see if that is true. We're going to apply all of the parts at once. So you'll notice here that we've got all three parts. We've got A being 2, H being negative 3, and K being negative 8. Let's go ahead and graph it and see if we notice anything. <clears throat> Oops. Sorry. All right. So this one I have to type in. I'm going to clear this. So 2x minus 3 squared minus 8. And I'm going to go ahead and graph it. Uh, let's go ahead and calculate, actually, with the calculator where this vertex is just so you can be convinced of the pattern. So the vertex is at positive 3 and negative 8. So it's at positive 3 and negative 8, and we can see that it opens up. Let's go ahead and do one more. <clears throat> We're going to graph this next one here. y is equal to negative, so I'm going to clear it, uh, negative bracket x plus 5 squared minus 2. So let's go ahead and graph that function. So what we're noticing here is the coefficient is negative, the value of h inside the brackets is positive 5, and the value of k is negative 2. If I go ahead and calculate, in this case the vertex is a maximum because it opens down, so calculate the maximum. We're almost done this particular lesson. You'll notice that the vertex is at negative 5 and negative 2. So the x-coordinate, what you're noticing is the x-coordinate is the opposite of what's in the brackets with x. The y-coordinate is the same as the constant term on the end. And because it's a negative coefficient in this case, it opens down. So let's go ahead and make some predictions, and I'll tell you that whether they are correct or not. So if you look at this next one, we should notice that it's going to open up because 0 0.5 is a positive value. We should notice that the x-coordinate will be the opposite of negative 3, so that's positive 3, and that the y-coordinate is going to be positive 1. Okay, and let's do a couple more. Uh, this guy here, the coefficient is negative, so it's going to open down. Okay, uh, the 
value inside the brackets is plus 6, which means the x-coordinate of the vertex will be negative 6. And because there's no constant on the end, you can actually put a plus 0. So that makes it a little bit more tricky. But that would be that function there. And we can actually look at that one. And then I will fill out the rest really quickly. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and graph that one. So the negative 3, just to convince yourself. Bracket and x plus 6 squared. So x plus 6 squared. So it opens down. And the vertex is at negative 6, 0. Okay? Uh, and let me just really quickly finish off this rest. I'm not going to color code this, uh, but it might help you out to make some predictions and maybe pause this video on your own. So here are the answers. The vertex at negative 4, 3, and it would open down. The next one, your vertex would be at 5, 2, and it would open up. The next one, your vertex would be at negative 350 and negative 75, and it would open up. And the last one, would be a vertex of 40 and 0, and it would also open up. Uh, if you're in my class, you will want to move on to the next lesson.